so in the top left you can see the Fibonacci program going. Uh, there's actually five of these just to make sure we max out the CPU cores, get it real hot. Uh, then the bottom left we have the temperature display which is updating about one in a second. And this is uh, just no overclock and with a heatsink on a Pi 3. Now we'll set up the overclock in the config.txt and we'll set ARM Freak to 1500, over voltage to nothing, and force turbo on. Now reboot and see what happens. Check the frequency is actually set. And 1500, that's what we should get. So now let's see if this is actually stable. Um, it also matters not just if the system stays up, but that the overclock actually stays. Uh, so we have that same Fibonacci generator running, and that's hammering all those cores. And we got the temperature in the bottom right there. And in just a second, we'll switch over and check to see if it's going to stay. On 1500 megahertz. Now let's try to make this overclock stable. So we got Pi 3B Plus here. And we got a few fans. Nothing special with these fans. They'll move mineral oil just the same as air. USB plugs, these are the same kind you would plug into a motherboard to bring uh, them outside of the case. Um, we will be taking the plugs off and then soldering them into the bottom of the board. Uh, that brings the USB ports outside of the mineral oil bath. Same idea with the GPIO header here. Uh, we can just plug that in and bring it outside of the bath. Then some heat sinks, um, some silicon sealant, and then of course the mineral oil itself and two 12 by 12 sheets of acrylic. These are one quarter inch thick. So here we're gonna try desoldering these USB headers. And I have to admit, I'm pretty good at soldering, not so good at desoldering. And this is a tool that's supposed to put heat into the solder pad and then suck the solder off. Um, the problem is that these bigger pads, you just can't get enough heat into them and you Kind of the heat spreads out into the rest of the board and that can damage other components so while you're kind of fooling around with this you're making the whole board hot and not really making any progress against the solder So here I thought I'd get out a soldering iron and just try to heat up the pad directly, uh, hoping that that'll get more heat right into the pad and then I'd be able to suck it off. Uh, unfortunately, this didn't really work either. So let's not worry about that right now. We can just solder cables into the bottom of the board instead. But how do we line that up? Well, I don't know what the Raspberry Pi Foundation actually designed this with, and I couldn't find any information on that that would help out. But from all the data sheets I saw on these USB headers, they're all pretty much the same. They have pretty straightforward uh, pin diagram. Pin one on the USB goes to pin one on the header. So it's all pretty sane. So with that in mind, we can probably make some assumptions uh, that this is just gonna work. Now what you see here is the pinout on USB ports themselves. On the left is just a pinout on a standard USB port. Uh, you can see the first pins uh, plus five volts and then two data pins and then ground. And then uh, on the right here you have the motherboard header. Remember that we're using just motherboard headers that we're gonna take apart. And all this maps out pretty much the way you'd expect. No real surprises. 
So let's do that. Here we have the pins mapped out and we'll see if this works. All right, uh, I got it plugged in here. Yep, the mouse still works. Uh, so just making the assumption that it's sane works just fine. Okay, so we got this GPIO flat pin cable, um, which I was a little worried that might get in the way of the mineral oil circulation. And also uh, it can take up a little bit less space if we do this old trick. Um, so this we used to do on IDE cables when we use that for hard drives. SATA connectors have made this totally obsolete, but if you just very carefully go in between the wires, about every two or three wires, and we're just going to split them apart and then we're going to pull them apart down the entire cable and then we can bundle them up into more of a cable than a uh, flat connector like you see here. Okay, we've got those split and now we're just going to pull them apart. And then of course we continue down the whole width of the cable and we get ourselves some nice wires. So this is on makercase.com just designing the dimensions of the case. And you can see I can use finger joints here which turned out to be a mistake. That's how they kind of all go together. Um, those didn't really work uh, as well as I hope. Usually when I'm making laser cut cases I use them and they work great. The problem here is you gotta get the sealant all in there and this made it much more difficult to seal the whole box than it usually is. Um, so if I was to redo this I'd go back and just make these flat corners which much much easier uh, to get the silicon sealant in there. But uh, just adding some of the additional things need here. Uh, so the design of this is going to be kind of a u-shape. Uh, so the uh, Raspberry Pi is going to sit in the inner part of the U and the outer part is just going to be circulating uh, the uh, mineral oil back around to the other side. Um, hard to describe in words but you'll see it uh, at the end of the video how that all works out. So here we're making a port where we can get the USB headers and the GPIO pins and anything else we need for uh, including the video connector as well. And then uh, putting the holes in for the fans. Alright, let's bring it to the laser cutter and here we're just on a test piece of plywood just to make sure that all fits. And here's the results and we're just gonna fit the uh, fans and then the Raspberry Pis to make sure all the screw holes line up and everything seems to be sized okay. And yeah, it looks good. Uh, messed up the location of this uh, little header port here. That's where all the USB ports and such are going to come out. So that all worked. So let's do the real thing. And here is the result. And this is just kind of a rough fit here. And you can kind of see the U shape I was talking about. Um, uh, just so we have this outside channel where all the mineral oil will circulate. All right, so let's uh, get to building this. We're just uh, putting down some nuts here. And we'll put in some silicon sealant just to make sure we don't get any leaks. Okay. 
Now we're putting the silicon along the edges and you can see what I was talking about here. It's harder to get all the silicon into those little finger joints. Uh, this would have been much easier with a straight piece. Left marks on the table? Yeah, okay. Maybe we shouldn't do that. Now we want to really get it in the sides uh, so that we seal up anything uh, that we can. This is pretty standard if you've ever done an aquarium like this. Now mount the fans. put those down with some silicon sealant as well. This isn't super critical if it's not sealed perfectly. And here we have the IDE cable, well I call it IDE, but GPIO cable uh, just all stranded up and we're starting to get the pie mounted in there. And here is the result. Uh, you'll want to weigh this down uh, for about a day or so. And uh, it's all dried up at this point. And I'm just using a scrap piece of acrylic to get rid of some of the excess. Uh, but this honestly isn't a big deal. And just to clean it up a little bit, just taking some isopropyl alcohol and uh, wiping down uh, the sides. We see if it boots. All right, that's a good sign. So now time for filling. I filled it inside this little bin here because I might have had leaks and I did end up having leaks the first time. Um, and I Fixed those up and still had a very slow leak after that that I just couldn't get. That's the way it goes. Now booting up with the mineral oil bath and let's check over clock temperatures. We're staying below 53. It's been running for a while at this point, about 21 minutes by the looks of it. Now we're up to what 66, 67 minutes. And we're still under 60 degrees with that Fibonacci really hammering those cores. Now 118 minutes, still under 60 degrees. And let's just double check. And yep, we're still at 1500 megahertz. That's great. That We have a stable 1500 megahertz overclock with a mineral oil bath. So if you enjoy this video, please subscribe to this channel. It really helps me out. And if you really like it, maybe you check out my book on LeanPub. Uh, Programming the Raspberry Pi with Perl goes into a lot of projects and everything you need to know about how to do that. So thanks for watching.